Hello there and welcome back to another video. Some of you may remember that back in November, I made a video where I built my own DIY CMOS battery tester. That was a pretty decent project, but sadly, my design had some flaws that I didn't expect and it wasn't as accurate as I'd wanted it to be. Additionally, when I made that video, I thought that I'd tested it enough to be sure it was accurate, but after using it more, I realized that it really wasn't and that meant that I couldn't trust the results it gave. Not ideal for a CMOS battery tester considering the entire point of the device is to tell me if the battery is good or not. and if it can't even do that, it's practically a paperweight. But hey, version one is never a perfect project. Because of that, we need a version two. That's what I'm building today, so let's jump right into some prototyping I did when brainstorming the design for this one. The main issue that I encountered with version one was that the battery needed a load across it to give accurate results. Otherwise, some batteries could report as good when they really weren't. All right, that's no big deal, or so I thought. I settled on a 330 ohm resistor in that video to hook up across the battery's terminals. Turns out that that resistor drew way too much current from the batteries, even though I originally didn't think it would. So, for V2, I've got to increase the resistance of the resistor across the battery so that we don't draw too much power from this little coin cell. While prototyping, I decided that a total resistor value of about 1 kilo ohm across the battery's terminals would be a decent resistance that wouldn't load the battery too much. However, instead of taking a 1k resistor and putting it across the positive and negative terminals of the battery, I chose to use a voltage divider across the positive and negative terminals. This will provide the Arduino, which will be measuring the battery's voltage, with a great sampling point, and at the same time, it will put the necessary load across the battery. During my prototype stage, I was having decent success with a 330 and 680 ohm resistor connected in series to form the voltage divider with 330 ohm resistor as resistor 1 and the 680 ohm resistor as resistor 2. The keen-eyed among you will have also probably noticed the small transistor that I have in this circuit. Someone commented on my original CMOS battery tester video and mentioned that I should try using a GPIO pin on the Arduino to toggle on and off the load. I tried this out in a few different ways with my prototype, but I couldn't find one that didn't have some kind of an issue with either messing up the voltage measurement or one that wouldn't backfeed 5 volts into the battery when the load was disabled. Connecting the ground pin of the voltage divider to a digital pin that you pull low to turn on the load works when turning the load on, but when turning it off you have to pull the pin high, which means you're connecting 5 volts to the 3 volt terminal of the battery, which doesn't sit right with me. Maybe the voltage drop across the divider would have made it fine, but toggleable load wasn't too much a concern for me because of how low the load in this version would be, so I didn't end up chasing this issue too hard. With a little test circuit built up, I started writing a small program to convert the output of the voltage divider into the battery's voltage. I then had the Arduino send this voltage back to the computer through its serial connection so I could see if it was working properly. Wearing some nitrile gloves so that the resistance of my hand wouldn't affect the results whatsoever, if that seems ridiculous to you, I recommend you watch the first CMOS battery tester video to see why this actually matters. Because the transistor was still in the circuit when I started out my code testing, the results were inconsistent and definitely not correct. After removing the transistor and altering the program slightly, including setting the two resistors values to the exact values of the specific resistors I had in the circuit here to account for their tolerance, and I was able to get accurate results and now I could officially start my designing. I don't really have any footage of the designing process because I didn't intend to record myself struggling to learn Altium Circuit Maker, but even though I don't have the footage of me drawing out the schematic, I do have the final schematic to show you. Yep, that's right. A surprising amount of people have asked where to get slash how to build my CMOS battery tester version 1, which appears in a video or two since the build video. I didn't really expect any interest, but at least some people have asked, so this one is entirely open source. I've got a link to an Instructables tutorial down in the description if you want to follow the tutorial and build one of these for yourself. I've got the code, schematic, STL files, and the PCB Gerber files all available so that you can build one of these for yourself. And now that I've mentioned Gerber files, I think it's a good time to show you where you should get the PCBs for this project if you're planning to build it yourself. You should order the PCBs from the sponsor of today's video, PCB. Way. I ordered my PCBs for this project from PCBWay and the quality of them is flawless. PCBWay offers several custom manufacturing technologies including PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, 3D printing, PCB assembly, and even more. For this project, or for any project for that matter, they're bound to have the manufacturing technologies that you need to make your idea into a tangible creation. I recommend you check out their PCB manufacturing services if you're wanting to make your very own CMOS battery tester based off of my design. And also, if you don't have a 3D printer, make use of their 3D printing services so that you can get the 3D printed 9 volt battery holder that I used in this project. Take a look at what PCBWay can do for you at the top link in the video description. 
Continuing with the project, I've designed this battery tester to be relatively light on components so that it should be relatively easy to build. Once more, you can find full parts lists, files, and written instructions on my Instructables page below. This project should only require an Arduino Nano, CR2032 socket, 6x6mm push button, small slide switch, 128x64 pixel I2C OLED display, a 9 volt battery clip, and two resistors. During the prototype phase of the project, the 330 and 680 ohm resistors seem to be working flawlessly, but doing a little more testing revealed that the total resistance should be even higher than 1 kilo ohm. In the end, a 1.5 kilo ohm and 3 kilo ohm resistor were used, so just pretend like the 330 and 680 ohm resistors aren't there during the build process. Soldering the components to the board really doesn't require much explanation, so go ahead and solder everything except the two resistors. You'll understand why in a moment. Just ensure you connect the red wire of the 9 volt battery clip to the hole of the power header, J1, that's marked with a plus sign and the black wire of the battery clip to the minus hole. One more word of caution, I recommend using a few female headers on the Arduino Nano instead of soldering it directly onto the board just so that you can pull the Arduino out of its socket when programming it. Doing this when programming it makes it so that it's impossible to cause any damage to your USB port by leaving the 9 volt connected to the Arduino when plugging it into your PC. If you choose not to do this, just unplug the 9 volt clip entirely when programming your Arduino. Once everything is soldered to the board except the two resistors, we need to do something with these resistors before soldering them onto the board. As I explained in a little more detail in my DIY PC power supply tester video, all resistors have a tolerance. This tolerance is usually a percentage which determines how far the actual value of a resistor can be off from its advertised value for the resistor to be able to be sold under its advertised value. For example, a 100 ohm resistor could have a 5% tolerance, which means it could actually measure anywhere from 95 to 105 ohms and it can still pass as a 100 ohm resistor. Manufacturers do this because it would be incredibly difficult and expensive to manufacture perfectly accurate resistors, and for a lot of applications, this value discrepancy doesn't matter all that much. Though, in a voltage divider application, such as this one, it will severely hinder the accuracy of our voltage measurement. In any case, this means that before you solder the resistors to the board, you need to take a multimeter and measure the exact resistance of the two exact resistors that you've picked out to solder to this board. They're almost certain to be off from their advertised value. For example, in the final 1.5 and 3 kilo ohm resistors I chose, the 3 kilo ohm resistor was actually spot on at 3000 ohms, while the 1.5k resistor was actually 1493 ohms. Once you have your two values, you need to run them through this equation. The 3 kilo ohm resistor should be R2, and the 1.5 kilo ohm resistor should be R1. Take the value this will spit out and keep as many of the decimal places as possible, but don't overload the Arduino's floating point variable limits, so I wouldn't go past 15 decimal places to be safe. In the program that I wrote for this tester, you should find that it won't upload to the Arduino because it will throw a compiler error at a specific line. Here is where you'll plug that value that you just got, follow the comment I left in there for slightly more detailed instructions. Save that code with your specific value and go ahead and finish your soldering job. Next up is a step that might only be necessary depending on the specific OLED display that you got. These displays communicate with the Arduino using an interface known as I2C. The Arduino talks to devices on the I2C bus based on their address, which is specific to each device connected and is set by the device itself. My OLED screens all use the address 0x3c, but yours might not and if that's the case, you won't get any display. To remedy this, follow the link in the Instructables to upload an I2C scanner sketch to the Arduino. Plug the Arduino into the board, make sure the 9V is completely disconnected from the board, and connect the Arduino's USB port to your computer. Then, watch the serial monitor's output and it will tell you what the address of your screen is. With that information, go into my program and edit the I2C address of the screen. Look for the comment in the code to see where to do that. Now we're pretty much done. The only thing left for you to do will be to upload the final code to the Arduino and then get the 9 volt battery holder and hot glue it to the back of the PCB. And here's a small note for the really detail oriented among you. I'm just putting this here in the script to address this because I want to mention it and I don't know where else to put it in here. I messed up the button footprint on the PCBs I have, of course I did, and so I had to reroute one of its pins. On the Gerber I provide to you, there is no such issue, so if you spot my rerouting of the button pin, don't worry about it, and if you're building this yourself, you do not need to do this. And that's all I have for you today. V2 is miles better than V1 was, and this is a project that I hope some of you choose to make and use in your own PC tech work. I compared the readings that this gives to the readings that my multimeter gives, and they're practically spot on. Considering that this tester places a tiny load on the battery and my multimeter doesn't, that explains the 0.05 volt difference in their readings with these specific batteries. This load is really important to get accurate results though, so even though it very slightly loads the battery down, that's by design because if this load causes the battery to fail its voltage tests, it's probably on its way out anyway. 
I hope that you were at least able to enjoy this video and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.